All right, turning to politics. Now, after three rounds of voting yesterday, we still don't have a new Speaker of the House. So we want to find out if that changes today and who better to break it down than Caroline Heldman, Professor of Critical Theory and Social Justice at Occidental College. Good morning, Caroline. Thank you so much for being here. Great to see you, Renee. Good morning. Good morning. So let's start with Kevin McCarthy. He's already moved into Nancy Pelosi's old office, but after three rounds of voting yesterday, he still doesn't have the 218 votes he needs to become Speaker of the House. What happens when Congress reconvenes later today? Well, they will take some more votes. I will say this hasn't happened for 100 years. And the last time it happened, uh, there were nine votes spread out over two months. Now, I don't think it's likely that that will happen here. I think they will resolve it more quickly. But the business of the House cannot start until they have a speaker. You can't appoint new, uh, confirm and swear in new members. You can't confirm committee assignments. You can't pass a package of rules. So the business of the House comes to a halt until they get the votes that they need. And Kevin McCarthy, you know, has worked uh, tirelessly, especially over the break, to try to secure these votes. But going into it, he simply didn't have it. On the third vote, uh, 20 people uh, decided not to vote for him, and they voted for Jim Jordan, who had ironically just given a speech in support of Kevin McCarthy. No, it seems that he's already given up so much already in his negotiations with the Freedom Caucus. Is there anything left for him to give without risking losing votes from the rank and file? Yeah, that is a great question. And he has played the game. He's given them everything they've asked for. He has gotten rid of the mask mandate and the fines that go with that. He's gotten rid of the metal detectors at the Capitol. And most importantly, uh, he has uh, conceded to letting five members of Congress remove the speaker at any point. So he's essentially played the game. Uh, it appears that these are either members who are lobbying for or angling for their own uh, specific committee assignments, or they're simply trying to flex their power and show that they can say no. So do you think he drags this on for weeks or maybe just saves himself the time and, and take his name um, out? And also, are there any other candidates that you're keeping an eye on? You know, I'm looking at Steve Scalise. I think he is the heir apparent if it doesn't work out for Kevin McCarthy, uh, the uh, member of the House from Louisiana, possibly Jen Jordan from Ohio or Elise Stefanik from New York. But these are both MAGA Republicans uh, who might not have the support of the majority. What I would be looking for, what I'm looking for today is how folks who've been there for a long time, 10 plus years or so on the Republican side, are treating the McCarthy votes. It is possible that because because McCarthy has used and run out of all of the carrots that he will now use a stick, which is not seating or threatening to not seat some of these members on committees. And I would assume that that is what the, the hardball that is happening behind the scenes right now. And I understand that this part is supposed to actually be the easy part. So what does this say about the Republican majority's ability to legislate if they can't even pick a leader? Yeah, good point. This is a divided party. I would argue it's been divided since 2015, the MAGA wing of the party and the more uh, moderate wing of the party. We've seen this play out in a variety of ways over the years. Uh, in this particular moment, they're not going to have any success legislating, right, because Democrats control the Senate and Democrats control the White House. Uh, but it looks really bad for the party. They need to, if, if I'm a Republican strategist, I, I would advise them to immediately get this resolved so that they can do what they're planning to do for the next two years, which is investigate Biden like crazy. I mean, we're going to see uh, good investigations, ones I would argue are not wasting taxpayer dollars, like what happened in uh, the, the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Uh, we'll also see very partisan, kind of frivolous uh, waste of taxpayer dollars investigating laptops and such. But the, the Republican Party can't do anything until they get this resolved. And of course, Democrats on their side, they've all stood united behind their choice for Speaker Hakeem Jeffries. Now, do you think there's any chance that six Republicans defect and they elect Jeffries as the next Speaker of the House? Could that happen? It is it possible. Anything is possible. In fact, the speaker could be Donald Trump. You don't actually have to be a member of the House of Representatives. So there are all of these scenarios that could play out. In this particular scenario, though, I don't think this will happen because Democrats stand to gain much more by watching the Republicans implode. Uh, and that is obviously happening uh, publicly. So I don't think that they're, the Democrats will throw Republicans a lifeline, right? All is fair and love, war and partisan politics. All right, Caroline Heldman, a professor of critical theory and social justice at Occidental College, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Renee. Have a wonderful day.